Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. On Music Box, um, the, the, I came up with the idea and then actually went to Dachau and Mauthausen and then went to Yad Vashem in Jerusalem to research it and then, then attended the Demyanyuk trial before I sat down to start writing. Um, so there was extensive research. On, on Jagged Edge, um, I re really researched. I went to several neo-Nazi jamborees you know, and, uh, and watch these folks and listen to the things that they believed in. Um, on Showgirls, um, I researched it extensively. Um, uh, it was before I'd met my wife. On the, uh, and there was a producer who said that I was absolutely relentless in my research. So things vary in terms of the research. Now, the basic instinct, um, the... It took 13 days, literally, from the time I started writing to the time that it was sold. Um, and, and, it, and something happened to me on that script that I never had. I, I felt like I was being channeled and, I, and, and obsessed with something. I, I wrote morning and night. I got up in the middle of the night, wrote down lines of dialogue. Um, I didn't know where I was going. I improvised the whole thing. I had no, no idea what the ending was going to be. Um, the... Uh, I listened to the Stones nonstop for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and at the end of it, you know, I, I had this thing, but I really felt like I was taking dictation. I called it Love Hurts all the way through. And as I walked out the door to, to mail it to my agent, the words Basic Instinct came into my head, and I came back in and, and sat down, put a new cover page on it, and sent it down. Three days later... Um, they sold it in, in an auction, and the reason it went for so much money was because every single studio but one bid on it, and consequently the, the price really went up. Um, one of the pieces of advice that, that I give in the book that I think is really important for people who want to be screenwriters is, is don't make deals over what you want to write. Write it. Sit down and write it. If you really believe in it, in, in a story or in characters, you know, you're a writer. You're supposed to sit down and write. You're not supposed to be out schmoozing, networking, making deals, you know, trying to trying to hustle projects. Um, I also think it's a much more honest way to work because instead of trying to say to people, this is how I'll do it and this, will, this is what it's going to be about, you do it, and then they can read it and decide whether they like it or not. The There are two other huge benefits. One is that if it's done already, then a director and a, and a producer and studio people can't mug in it as much because it's there done in front of them, whereas if you make a deal, then from the very beginning they will bombard you with notes. Um, and, of course, the final is that, is that uh, your profit is going to be much bigger because other people can bid on it. It's not just one studio. So the payoff is always going to be bigger. One of the reasons that, that I've had such big payoff on the scripts is because I really believe in working it on specs um, and just doing it and throwing it out there. Now, I've had three or four scripts that never sold in the same way that the others did. But I think I learned something about writing through the course of writing them, and I had fun doing it because I believed in the story. Sometimes, you know, you write something, and ten years later, it, it comes out of the woodwork. I did a little piece called Magic Man about a, a, the 16-year-old Hungarian kid and his relationship with a disc jockey and his dad. Took it out to auction. I'd never sold. Um, ten years later, Naomi, after I met her, decided that she was going to read all of my scripts. And she really liked this one and, and suggested that the, the problem might be that the relationship between the boy and the dad is unrealized. So I went back and I rewrote the whole thing. Um, I retitled it Telling Lies in America, and then about three months later, someone read it young director named Guy Furland read it and said, I've just got to do it, and he rounded up the financing. You know, so the, the most important thing that I can say to you is is don't try to be Willie Loman selling shoes, you know, um, and feeling worn out at the end of the day from the process of selling. Um, 
there's a German word that I really like, and I don't like a lot of German words for obvious reasons, but this is word I really like. It's, the word is Sitzfleisch. It's S-I-T-Z-F-L-E-I-S-C-H, and it means the ability to sit on your ass. That's what we're supposed to do, you know, to sit on our butts and write, not, not all the rest of it.